Hi, I'm Larry Menti, next on Jersey Matters. Does a recent Supreme Court ruling open the door to school vouchers? And the Broadway hit show Bandstand has its roots right here in New Jersey. And our big interview this week is with Lieutenant Governor Kim Guadagno, now the Republican candidate for governor. But first, a few words. What if you held a gubernatorial election and no one cared? Maybe it's just the doldrums of summer and things are going to pick up in the fall, but it's eerily disturbing how few people care about the 2017 New Jersey gubernatorial race between Republican Kim Guadagno and Democrat Phil Murphy. Just a reminder, Election Day is November 7th. That's just three months away. So what's happening? Why the big election yawn? Maybe it's because right now people don't believe the race is that close. A recent poll shows Democrat Phil Murphy with a commanding lead, but poll numbers shouldn't be your excuse to not be engaged. It is not only your right, it is your duty to be more engaged as a citizen of the United States and a citizen of New Jersey. In 2013, in the race for governor, voter turnout was less than 40%. It's expected to be even lower this time around. Don't let that happen. Be engaged. Listen to the candidates, address your concerns, and then vote. And if you don't, then don't complain about taxes or transportation or a host of other problems, because you know what? You're the problem. And with that, here is our interview with Lieutenant Governor and Republican candidate for governor, Kim Guadano. Thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Uh, every time we talk to a candidate for the first time, and this is the first time I've had a chance to talk yes. to you, uh, we give them an opportunity to just talk about themselves and introduce themselves to the voters. So, so we'll just do the bio, bio. So I was okay. born in Iowa, and everybody says Iowa, but I moved all around the country. I mean, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Connecticut, New York, uh, several different times up until the time I turned 20. Then I went to college for four years, law school, and then I worked in the city for a while. Finally got my dream job as a federal prosecutor where I met my husband uh, in the Eastern District of New York, organized crime and racketeering. And we prosecuted cases and when we decided to get married, we moved to New Jersey where he was born and raised, not too far from where we're sitting right now. When I got involved with my kids because I was staying home and teaching at night, I became a commissioner of my town, a little tiny town of Monmouth Beach, which is 105 on the parkway, if anybody understands that, Jersey talk. And uh, did that for two years, had a chance to become the sheriff, the first woman sheriff in Monmouth County, New Jersey, which is uh, about 650 law enforcement officers. I was the warden of the jail. I ran the, J the youth detention center, the 911 communication center. I did that for two years, and then the governor called me and said, would you like to be the first lieutenant governor of the state of New Jersey? That was back in 2009. And the rest is history. And now, and now here you are running for governor. Right. I, I want to go back to a speech you gave a couple of weeks ago, because so I, I know you're not a supporter of Donald Trump, but you gave a speech that was very Trumpish, where you attack the New Jersey media and, and accuse them of fake news because they talked about polls showing you behind, and they talked about the RNC and the RGA, the Republican Governors Association, not making your race a priority. What was fake about that? Well, let, let's stop for one second and back up. First of all, you were in the room, and it was a long speech, and I made one comment to, about, I guess you could call that fake news, because there was a report that came out that RNC wasn't supporting us and on RGA wasn't supporting us, and we were in a room with a co-chairman of the RNC. So clearly there was no truth to that particular story, and that's what we were saying. So the RNC not only came out and supported us right away, but also helped us raise money, and there'll be some announcements over the next couple of well, weeks. Because they're going to give you money? Is that the announcement coming? I'm not going to tell you what the announcement is, or it wouldn't be an announcement. So, um, but they are supporting us, and uh, yesterday you saw we have national support. Maggie's List came out, which is a con the, uh, Republican conservative women's group like the Democrats have Emma's, Emily's List. Um, the Republicans have Maggie's List, and for the first time, they've uh, endorsed a statewide candidate, and that's me, and that came out just yesterday. I'm very proud of that national support. The expectations game. Is, is, is a difficult thing. It, it's, it, it becomes reality when people start to, to believe that you can't win. And I know people that like you, I know people that support you, that privately say, yeah, but she's not going to win. 
and I, that's a, and I think that's what part of that speech was about. I, you can correct me if I'm wrong. That's what part of that speech was about. You have to, you have to stop that to, to raise money and, well, and to get that voters happens out. In every and campaign, enthusiasm. Right? That happens in every campaign. This is a blue state. Uh, and the polls, the public pollings, which have been wrong more often than right, uh, right after the primary, just reflected the state. And so what we're talking about is our message is beginning to resonate. So you see the polls getting closer. Our internal polls close, surely show us um, within striking distance, single digits. And, and when people get to know my opponent and know that my opponent has literally promised to raise taxes on the most taxed people in this country, they can't vote for him. Um, we have kind of a simple message, uh, lower taxes, simple as that. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent or an undeclared, it's, it's lower taxes, a very simple message in New Jersey. And that's not Republican or Democrat. So you'll promise polls. not to raise taxes if, you're, if you become governor? Yeah. You're, and you promise to lower taxes? Right. That's exactly it. That's it. And in fact, I take it. I took it one step further because I've been in New Jersey. I know. I know New Jerseyans well enough to know that they don't believe that. They've heard it too many times. I have promised not to run again if I don't lower property taxes in New Jersey. And that's the game changer. The issue here in this election is really clear. Do you want to see raised taxes? Vote for the other guy. Um, because I'm not going to raise taxes. We're going to help people who need the most help. We're going to, we, we have property tax relief plans that you can go on Kim 4 nj and, and look up if you want. And I've um, read it, and, yeah. I, and I've read it, and, and you've gotten credit for actually coming out with a plan. I mean, well, you've, you've, better a, lot better of people a plan come, than none at all, which right, is what exactly. my opponent has. Yeah, and, and people have pointed that out in editorials. Uh, However, the criticism is that you can't pay for your plan. You know, the amusing thing about all of that is two things. First, you have to understand that the plan came from blue states. It came from uh, mass Massachusetts and Illinois. We pulled a page out of the Democrat book, threw it down and said, I challenge you to adopt this plan to help the most vulnerable people in New Jersey, those senior citizens that have to leave because they can't afford their property taxes, those millennials who can't buy homes because property taxes continuously go up, or those families who are living paycheck to paycheck and literally sit down at dinner and say, do I pay my property tax bill tonight or do I lose my house? That's what I'm talking about, and that's what I believe is worth investing in. A um, billion dollars is the estimated tax. What amuses me, what amuses me is my opponent has said he wants $75 billion or more investment, and no one challenges him about where he's going to get the money to do that. We all know that when he uses the word investment, he really means increased taxes. And if you have made the kind of promises he has made, which is, increase uh, sales tax, increase death tax, increase business tax, increase income taxes. You know people can't afford that anymore. Um, I know that a billion dollars out of a $35 billion budget, when we do our Audit Trenton program, when we take some savings out of um, some of the paid uh, sick leave programs that we have in New Jersey, when we um, start using our money wisely in transportation or in the school system, that a billion dollars can be done, and I know it because we've done it before. You know where you can get the billion dollars? I thought of you, because I, I watched an interview with you when you talked about revenue coming in, and now it looks like uh, most legal analysts believe sports betting is going to be right. coming to New Jersey. That's right. $10 billion for the right. state of New Jersey, and that's all going to be taxed. And it's going to bring a whole lot of money in. Have, have you thought of that already and where that money would be used best and most wisely? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Just because the Supreme Court g granted cert, I mean, I know they're going to hear argument on it. Everybody is certainly hopeful. The question is how long will it take? And we're elected in January. The first piece of legislation I, I invite the legislature to adopt is my 5% plan. So you have to be able to pay for it then. And within 100 days, I have my lieutenant governor uh, in charge of an audit to find the money um, to put into that property tax plan. Because the one thing we can't do is just move the beans around the table anymore. We have to actually find the savings. And I know we can. 30 years ago, John Kane, uh, Tom Kane did it as governor. Uh, and two other states have saved upwards in the last four years doing the same kind of efficiency audit, anywhere from 500 
$1 million in one year to $2 billion over four years. So it's not unrealistic at all. You talked about the role of lieutenant governor. I want to talk about your lieutenant governor, the lieutenant governor that uh, you'll be running against, and also your role as lieutenant governor when Jersey Matters continues with Kim Gudano. Lieutenant Governor Kim Gudano right after this.